This video is called The Beginnings of Democracy. And in this video, we're going to be looking at ancient governments and ancient democracies and how those ancient democracies like Greece and Rome influenced the thinking of America's founders. So what are we going to talk about in this video? Well, first of all, we should celebrate a little bit because the United States is very unique. We have a very cool thing going on in our country, and that is that we have the longest um, government that's currently in existence in the world. Our Constitution has been the government of the United States for over 230 years since 1788 um, when the Constitution was ratified by the United States. So that's pretty cool. And today we're going to look at how some of the ideas that went into that Constitution and some of those ideas came from other governments. Um, some of them were the United States' own ideas, like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and uh, our founding fathers. They had great ideas about government, but many of their ideas are also stolen from other governments in history. The two important governments that the founding fathers would look at for guidance when they were creating the government of the United States were ancient Greece and ancient Rome. And then it's also really important, probably most important thing that they learned was ancient Greece and Rome, their, their democratic governments would eventually fail. So we're going to look at the failures specifically of the Roman government and how those failures could have influenced the founding fathers to make to not make the same mistake that the ancient Greeks and Romans did with the structure of their government. So first of all, we'll begin by taking a quick look at the Greeks and what they believed about government. First of all, um, the city-state of Athens, which was in Greece, was the first democracy in history. It was happened somewhere in the 600 BCs. The exact year is not really important. Democracy is a Greek word, as you can see from this little graphic here. Demos, the first part of the word, means the people, and kratos means rule, so it basically means the rule of the people. In ancient Greece, they had a direct democracy, which means that the people who could vote, they actually voted on the laws. Um, there was no you know, um, represent, representatives who would vote for the people, so the people directly worked on the law, so it was a direct democracy. Most people in Athens were not allowed to participate in this direct democracy. Only about 10% of them, give or take a little bit, could actually participate in the government. The voting population, the, that 10% who could vote, because they were just regular people. Um, they, didn't, you know, they weren't professional government people. They were just regular people that voted on the laws. They were widely swayed by writings and dramas. So someone could create a play, put the play on, making something look bad. And the next day, the, the people would vote on something, and they'd vote the way the play went. So there were some surprising outcomes of votes, which became a problem in ancient Greece. So what America's founding fathers learned from the Greeks was that direct democracy, where the people can directly create laws, doesn't really work in a large group. It really, quite honestly, doesn't really work at all because it's too inconsistent, it's too impractical, and it's subject to emotional reactions. When the people who are being affected can directly vote, um, you don't have professional lawmakers who can step back and look at the long-term um, problems. They, they look people that get too emotional. They look at the short term, and that becomes a problem. So let's move on to the Romans. In the 500 BCs, the Romans overthrew their king, and they created a republic. A republic or a representative democracy is different from direct democracy. The people don't get to vote. Well, they do get the vote for, for in some way, but they don't get the vote directly in the laws. They're removed from the lawmaking pro process. Representatives are chosen by the people. That's where the people get to vote. So they get to vote somebody in, and then those representatives are the ones that make the laws. The power still lies with the people in a republic, but the officials are the ones that make the laws. So there's a little bit of separation between the people and the lawmaking process. The way this republic was set up, Rome's government had a Senate, and we stole that idea from Rome and our Senate. The Rome's government was run by this Senate, and senators were elected by the people. Two consuls were the leaders of the Senate. So these people kind of acted like the president. And they were, were elected to one-year terms. They could not serve twice in a row. Other lesser elected positions also existed. There was a division in Roman society between the wealthy noble class called the patricians and sort of the regular working class Joes called the plebeians. And we're going to look at that a little bit more. That's part of the reason why the government didn't work. Because plebeians were not allowed really to be part of the government. They could vote, but they couldn't actually participate. They, they wouldn't become senators or consuls or anything like that. So moving on here. Why did this Republic and Rome not work out? What, can we, what could America learn from Rome? Well, first, the Roman Republic was awesome. For a long period of time, it was the most powerful nation in the world probably the most powerful nation in history. 
As time went on, however, there was corruption and greed in the Roman Senate and it caused it to fall apart. There were divisions between plebeians and patricians, those two different classes of people that we talked about before, and that caused further damage because plebeians were a little bit bitter about being excluded. As corruption in the Senate spread, they started to change the rules. Consuls changed rules and could be elected many times. Senators became greedy and started making laws that did what was best for them instead of what was best for the entire country. In the 50s BC, there was a guy named Julius Caesar. You may have heard of him. He became consul and eventually voted himself in for rule for life. So he was voted in to rule the rest of his life, which is not really a republic. That sounds more like a dictatorship. Caesar was loved by the plebeians. He was, Caesar was actually pretty smart. He gave the plebeians, this lesser class of people, I guess you could call them, more power and more influence. So the plebeians supported Caesar. With the support of the plebeians on his side, um, no one could really hurt Caesar because then they would have an angry mob to deal with. Now, eventually, Caesar was murdered by senators. They were losing their power. Caesar was becoming a dictator and doing whatever he wanted, and the Senate was losing their influence. So senators got mad, and they killed Caesar. They murdered him. He took 23 stabs to the body. After his death, there was this power void in Rome, and there was a series of civil wars broke out, and there was no longer a Roman Republic, but an empire where there would be an emperor in charge, kind of like this guy here, except for the Roman empires couldn't shoot lightning out of their hands. So let's kind of look back at what we learned in this video. Prior to the United States, there had been other governments that experimented with democracy. Ancient Greece and Rome were two of them. There were others as well. The governments of ancient Greece and Rome had unique structures and beliefs, and our founding fathers got a lot of ideas from ancient Greece and Rome about good ideas about how to run a government. However, these ancient Greek and Roman governments eventually fell apart. So our founding fathers, they learned from the mistakes of ancient Greece and Rome. And you'll see that when the founding fathers create the constitution, they put some things into our government that make the problems that Greece and Rome had not possible in the United States.